In this video, I'm going to briefly share some strategies uh, we covered at the recent Fabric conference uh, to give people some guidance on protecting some of their priority Fabric workloads through using multiple capacities. Um, there's some good stuff coming in this space to give you more options, uh, but understanding uh, some techniques with multiple capacities may, may help you out until then and potentially beyond. So Fabric is built upon the capacity model that came along with Power BI. Um, and so capacity admins that are familiar with that, this is nothing new. Uh, however, with Fabric, there's a whole lot more things that people can do. And while this makes a lot of people in the organization on the left side very happy uh, with all the stuff they can do now without having to spin up new stuff and they can just leverage their existing uh, Power BI, now Fabric capacity, capacity admins can have mixed emotions about that. Um, the vast majority of capacities have no issue and are properly sized. Um, but those where uh, throttling starts to become an issue, you know, can can have some of these emotions shown here. So I just wanted to go through the uh, we usually say there's three techniques. I'm actually going to go through four today uh, to to deal with that when your capacity starts to be throttled. Right. And this is usually when that conversation starts. People use the metrics app and they see the bar, the lines, the blue or the red go above the line and they say, hey, I'm, I'm being throttled. Um, one clarification is you do get a little bit of overage uh, for free. Um, and so just because you go above 100 percent doesn't mean you're being throttled. You actually need to click over to the throttling tab and then these three different sub tabs to see uh, if you're being throttled. The first one you hit is this interactive delay. Uh, and in this case, there is some of that going on on this capacity. If I had clicked to the next one, it would be well below the line. Um, so it's only interactive delay on this one. Now, one thing you can do is if you do start to get severe throttling and you start to see interactive or even background rejection, um, that can lead to an outage for a little bit. And one way with an FSKU um, is to just hit pause resume in the Azure portal and that'll clear the carry forward. You sort of pay it now and then you're back running again. That's great in a pinch, um, but it isn't the best long term strategy. You don't want to make a habit out of that. So we usually say uh, there's three ways and I'll show a fourth. Uh, one is to scale up. And so I made these diagrams here. I'll use the same pattern on all the slides where the blue rounded rectangles are workspaces uh, and the area sort of represents the compute needed from the items in that workspace and the black rectangles are the capacity. So in this case, you can see, you know, the workloads on this capacity are taking more uh, than what's available. So the first option is just to scale up, get a bigger capacity, right? Uh, and that really is, is easy to do. Um, it does add co cost, of course, uh, and it does minimize um, the potential risk for high compute items, unintentionally high compute items. Uh, have in fact, it's, it's reduced, but it's still possible, right? Uh, you also have the options of turn on auto scale if you have a PSKU, um, or an FSKU, you know, you can, you can do this in the Azure portal, uh, change the size pretty easily. So the second option, if we go back to the starting situation, is to scale out. And in th that case, it's splitting the work out to multiple capacities, each of them properly sized, right? Uh, and you can do this with P or, P or F SKUs. Uh, the P SKUs are on the deprecation path. And again, this is this is pretty easy to do. It does protect, say, in this case, these two prod workloads are priority. It does protect these from any overages or throttling that may occur over on, on this capacity, right? Uh, and it does give you some flexibility. You can have different settings on different capacities from a, from a governance standpoint as well. Um, this, this may increase cost. Um, and, you know, each of these items, you know, they this workspace, for example, benefited from sometimes having a bigger box when it needed it, if you had a, a spike. Um, so the box is smaller for this. So there's a increased chance this, this one could be throttled. Um, and also to a thing to keep in mind with these um, approaches is if, if you create a capacity that's less than F64, um, pro license or consumers will need pro licenses to uh, consume Power BI content. Uh, and there's some some other differences in features as well. The third option, uh, and this is the one I definitely recommend you try to do first, 
is to optimize. So in this case, the capacity stays the same size and we reduce the size of all the workloads. Um, and again, so there's no increase in cost, which is great. The challenge with this one uh, is it can be hard to do and time consuming to, to fix all those items or a few of the items, you know, better leverage best practices. And hopefully as you go through that exercise, you know, the content creators that you're working with to improve each of these things, they're carrying that learning forward for the, the next uh, content they create. All right. So a fourth option is, is really just a variation on the second one, scale out. And in this case, um, I call it just isolate. So in this case, you're you know, providing independent capacities for priority content that's properly sized. And really the, the other stuff is maybe fighting it out over here on this capacity that may not be properly sized, right? So that's why it looks almost the same as scale out. Um, so you get all the same kind of pros and cons, except that you know the folks with items in this space uh, may get a little frustrated, right? All right, so I wanna just cover sort of three variations on isolate uh, for you to consider to you to leverage multi-capacity to, to protect your, your workloads. So the first concept I'll talk about, and this is definitely the one I recommend, uh, is a tryout capacity. So in this case, you're creating a small FSKU capacity to try out new content, either you know, put an individual uh, new item there or put a whole workspace there. Uh, and then keep an eye on the metrics app to see how much compute this uh, new stuff is, is taking, right? And if it looks good, right, then you can go ahead and move that content over to your prod capacity and have confidence that those things are not going to be uh, impacted, okay? Uh, the second way is a reverse of that, and I call it a timeout capacity. So again, we've got our prod capacity here, but some new stuff came along. And I noticed in the metrics app that we're starting to see throttling or just getting a little too close for comfort. Um, I can go ahead and move this content over to this timeout capacity. It may not be appropriately sized, right? So definitely um, this, you consumers are not gonna have a great experience here uh, while you work out um, imp implementing best practices on, on this new content, right? And in both of these, you know, when you're not using these capacities, you, you can pause them uh, as well. Of course, this stuff would be unavailable in the previous one with the tryout. If nothing's on it, you can pause it and save money. And then the third one is very close to the last one where you, I call it a rescue capacity, where again, you can pause this when not in use. Um, but if you start to see that scenario again, where new stuff is threatening uh, your prod stuff, in this case, um, you just move the prod stuff. And, you know, so you may or may not still have an issue here or you may have some burn down uh, while, while uh, you clear the overage. Uh, but in this case, you know, your prod uh, workload uh, gets gets a fresh uh, set of compute units and uh, should work just fine. OK, so again, just a brief video to share some strategies on how you can leverage multiple capacities to protect your priority workloads in Fabric.